Hello folks and goats and welcome to another deck tech brought to you by the Command Valley. Super glad to have you here because we've got one banger of a deck lined up for you. Before we get into it, a couple of quick reminders. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe if you enjoy our content and check out all of our other deck techs, gameplays, and podcast episodes. Another way to help out the podcast is by getting cards from our sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you were looking for any cards for this deck or for other decks that you may have, go ahead and click the link in the description box below where you'll be able to go to their website and input a full list of cards included with this deck. And lastly, if you are looking for the best way to support our podcast, I invite you to go over to patreon.com slash command Valley, where you can check out our tiers, exclusive content, bonus features, and even playing Commander with the members of the podcast. All right, let's jump into my favorite deck that I have ever built. And no surprise, in my favorite colors, we are building Sin Triplets. For two white, blue, black, we have a 3-3 legendary artifact creature, Human Wizard, that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. This turn, that player can't play spells or activated abilities and plays with his or her hand revealed. You can play cards from that player's hand this turn. Now, if you have played Commander at all and you have faced this deck, you know that this is a deck to be feared. It's definitely not fun to play against, especially when it's built out to the tier, to, to top tier control. But luckily, I brought this down a little bit because I do like playing this deck with my friends to make sure it's still fun. So the best way to describe this deck, or the best phrase to describe it, is that if you've casted it, you can keep it. Essentially, what that means is I've built this deck to mean that if you have not casted it, I can take it from you. But if you cast it, fair game, you can keep it. So that means send triple its ability to take things from their hand still applies. We've got things to take things from their library. We've even got spells to take their spells on the stack. So if it resolves, it's good. So that gives you a fun little leeway to, to give your opponents, make it a little bit less brutal for them, but still keeping the spirit of sin triplets. So as with control decks, we have two goals. The first is to stop our opponents from doing things, and the second is to do things ourselves. Now in Sin Triplets, the do things ourselves means that we're going to be taking things from our opponents. So a lot of the cards that we have in this deck, specifically around Sin Triplets, is to take things from our opponents. Asterix, as long as they haven't resolved their spells. Now this doesn't count removal. We can still remove them, but we won't steal them. So let's go over the first part of the deck, which is how do we stop our opponents from doing things? Because you know me, if any of you out there are Esper players, you know that feeling. Feels good. So in this category, we have not necessarily stacks, but more control pieces, such as Dranith Magistrate, which is a wizard that stops your opponents from casting spells anywhere other than their hands. Grand Abolisher, which is a 2-2 cleric. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. This helps really well to stop your opponents from interacting with you or countering your spells while it's your turn. Lavinia Azurius Renegade, white blue for a 2-2. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana costs greater than the number of lands that player controls, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. Now this is a amazing piece of control in this deck. You would not be, I know you won't be surprised to know that most commander players want to cheat out things. They want to spend more mana than they have, especially with signets, with mana ramp, that's artifacts just a super great card. Uh, even Mind Sensor, a 2-1 with flash and flying, and if an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top four cards of that library instead. Very famous control piece. Fate Spinner, one blue-blue, we've got a 1-2 wizard. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player chooses draw step, main phase, or combat phase. The player skips each instance of the chosen steps or phases that this turn. Now this can really help to stop people from going into their combat step, because mo most people want to draw and play spells, so going to combat is something they have to sacrifice for, and that helps us be able to keep safe from um, big scary aggro decks. Kunaros, Hound of Athros, is one white black for a 3 3 with Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink, and creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield, and players can't cast spells from graveyards. Now, this is already a good card, but specifically in my playgroup because. <coughs> guess. We've also got Gingitaxis Core Augur for 8 blue blue. We got a 5 4 legendary creature Praetor. At the beginning of your end step, draw 7 cards, and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7. We've also included Elish Norn in here, a 5 7 with a static ability to give all of your opponent's creatures minus 2 minus 2, and all of your creatures plus 2 plus 2. Another include that I personally love playing in my playgroups, but you don't necessarily have to play it because I know it's not really relevant in many playgroups, but Containment Priest to be able to stop non-token creatures from entering the battlefield if they weren't cast is just a very powerful effect, especially with all these decks running rampant. Things like Atla Palani, Braids, Marin of Clan Neltoth. Just lots, lots and lots of decks running out there that would be very upset to see this card. Telepathy is one blue for an enchantment. Each of your opponent plays with his or her hand revealed, which is really nice to see what they're up to, see what their plan is, but also it's really nice to see what opponent you want to target with send triplets when you get her out. 
We've got Ghostly Prison, Propaganda, and Dissipation Field, and Sphere of Safety. These are all essentially enchantments that stop our opponents from wanting to attack us, whether it be attacks or for Dissipation Field, it returns it back to their hand. Now, you don't have to play all four of these. I think you could do with two or maybe three, but you definitely want to keep yourself safe from the aggressive strategies or big swings coming at you because we don't have a lot of creatures in here. Our goal is to steal other people's creatures. And then finally, we have plenty of counter spells in this deck. Dispel, Swan Song, Arcane Denial, Dovin's Veto, Perplex, Render Silent, and Desertion, which is really nice because we can put that card onto the battlefield under our control if it's an artifact or if it's a creature. So now let's talk about the ways that we're going to steal things from our opponents because we have send triplets, but we don't want to bank on send triplets because again, if you've ever played against send triplets, you know to remove on sight, nobody likes cards taken from their hand. So we have a lot of redundancy. We have a lot of ways of stealing things without send triplets, but if we do have send triplets, then awesome. Cards like Thada Adele Acquisitor is a 2-2 with Island Walk. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for an artifact card and exile it. Then that player shuffles his or her library until end of turn, you may play that card. Thief of Sanity is is one blue black for a 2-2 whenever it deals combat damage to a player look at the top three cards of that player's library exile one of them face down then put the rest into their graveyard and then for as long as that card remains exiled you may look at it and then you may cast it as though it were mana of any color to cast and then we have a couple of copy abilities so we're not going to steal people's things but we're definitely going to want to copy them things like clever impersonator evil twin phyrexian metamorph and spark double with Spark Double only being able to copy your creatures and Planeswalkers, but that still can be very effective when we have other copy abilities on the battlefield. Fractured Identity is three white blue for a sorcery exile target non-land permanent. Each player other than its controller creates a token that's a copy of it. And then of course we have Expropriate for seven blue blue. We've got a sorcery with Council's Dilemma starting with you. Each player votes for time or money. For each, for each time vote, take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. Exile Expropriate. Now you may be saying with this card, now Griffin, listen, you said you wouldn't steal anything from people's boards. I did say that. Expropriate is in here because it's not my choice whether I take some of your stuff, that's your choice. So I am therefore free of all guilt. Give me the extra turns. Mirror Maid is one blue blue for an enchantment. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment. Mind's Dilation is five blue blue for a enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell, each turn that player exalts a top card of his or her library. If it's a non-land card, you may play it. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Just a very fun, powerful effect. If it sticks around for one round of the table, then it can cause some pretty bad damage. Now, if you are feeling up to it, if you don't really want to stick to the idea that you don't want to steal things on people's boards if they've resolved, then you can definitely play one of my favorite cards, Empress Galena. For three blue blue, we've got a one three. For blue blue, tap, gain control of target legend or legendary permanent. I heard you like stealing people's commanders. Boy, do I have the product for you. Empress Galena, buy now and make all your friends hate you. Now, the third category in this deck is about send triplets. I know we haven't talked about send triplets a lot because the deck really can do powerful things without send triplets. And that is the secret to any good commander deck is that you don't want to bank too hard on the commander because most of the time your commander will be removed, especially if it's as powerful as send triplets. Now, we still want to use send triplets. And one of the key things about using send triplets is you need to have mana that isn't in your color identity to be able to cast spells from your opponent's hands. We'll have access to blue, white, and black mana, but our opponents may have red and green spells, so we have ways around that. The best card that you can play in this deck is Celestial Dawn. It's one white white for an enchantment that says lands you control are planes. Non-lands you own that aren't in play, spells you control, and non-land non permanents you control are white. You may spend white mana as though it were a mana of any color. You may spend other mana only as though it were colorless mana. A lot of text, it just essentially means that your lands tap for any mana. It's the same as Chromatic Orrery, except it just makes things white and planes. But we also do have Chromatic Lantern here, which lets our lands tap for any mana. Other artifacts that can tap for whatever we want. We've got Fire Mine Vessel, Mana Scape Refractor, Dark Steel Ingot, Prismatic Lens, Felwar Stone, Cold Steel Heart, and Chromatic Orrery, which is a Chromatic Lantern, but it also is extremely powerful. So with those artifacts, with those enchantments, we can start casting spells from our opponent's hand, no matter what colors they are playing. And something else that I have put in this deck, which is my personal choice, you do not have to play this because I totally get the, I totally get the side eyes I get for this. But I love it when I give my opponents more cards because the more cards they have, the more selection I have. And I like having selection. So in this deck, we've got Howling Mine, 
two mana for an artifact that each player draws an extra card. We just also got Dictate of Crowfix, which does the same thing, just allowing our opponents to draw an extra card on their turn. Now, I haven't included too much in here because we don't want to give our opponents too much of an advantage, especially because we can let them draw into removal and stuff like that. So I can see the debate of not putting these in here, but I have a lot of fun with these cards. All right, to close off the deck, let's talk about our removal. We are an Esper Control deck, so obviously we're going to have plenty of removal to our disposal. Path to Exile, one mana to exile a creature and give it and give your opponents a land. D Spark that exiles a target permanent with converted mana cost four or greater. Generous Gift is two and a white to destroy any permanent, and, it, and its controller creates a 3-3 three, three elephant token. Mortify is one white black for an instant that says destroy target creature or enchantment. Vindicate is one white black for a sorcery, destroy target permanent. Utter End is two white black for an instant exile target non-land permanent. You lose three life. And then we have Eugene the Spirit Dragon, which is eight mana for seven lords, two planeswalker, plus two deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker, minus X, exile each permanent with merit converted mana cost X or less, that's one or more colors. And minus 10, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, and put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. And now for my favorite section in all of Magic, the card draw section. Us control players, and I think us magic players in general, just love drawing cards. So there's an excess of drawing cards in this deck because we want, always want answers to things. If there's something that's threatening our board, we always want to be able to deal with it. So we need to include as much card draw as we can. Teferi Master of Time is two blue blue for a Planeswalker. You may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi Master of Time on any player's turn anytime you could cast an instant. Plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Minus three, target creature you don't control phases out. And minus ten, take two extra turns up to this one. Windfall, two and a blue for a sorcery. Each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of player discarded this way. Mystic Remora is one blue for an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep cost of one. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four generic. Necroponents is black, black, black for an enchantment. Skip your draw step whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard, and pay one life. Exile the top card of your library face down. Put that card into your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Ristic Study is two and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. And then of course, Ginger Texas and Chromatic Ori can also draw us cards. Before we end the deck tech, I wanted to mention the two all-star cards in this deck. Things that you could build this day, this deck any way you wanted to, but these are the two cards that I recommend every single person who's playing 10 triplets needs to play. The first is Paradox Haze for two and a blue. We have an enchantment aura, enchant player. At the beginning of enchanted player's first upkeep each turn, that player gets an additional upkeep step after this step, which means we get two triggers off of send triplets and we can target two opponents to be able to have double access to their cards. And it also means they both cannot play spells or activated abilities, which is very, very helpful, essentially shutting down two thirds of the board. And then the second one is Monomic Betrayal. For one blue-black, we have a sorcery. Exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as there were mana of any type to cast those spells. At the beginning of the next end step, if any of those cards remain exiled, return them to their owner's graveyards. Then exile Monomic Betrayal. Now, this is just a super fun card. You don't have to play it. I'm suggesting that you play it because it's a lot of fun. Watch your opponents drop all of the good creatures into their graveyard, cast Monomic Betrayal, and just cast whatever you want. Whatever your heart fancies, you are a control deck. You go get them, tiger. And with that, that's the end of the tech tech. If you want to check out the mana base in this deck, feel free to check out the, the deck list in the description box below where it has all the lands included as well. And I cannot recommend this deck highly enough. It is very fun, especially if you're into control, especially if you're into just passing the turn without doing anything. It's a lot of fun. Just make sure that your play group is okay with Sand Triplets first. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with a group of people, brought out Sand Triplets, and they just walk away. All right, friends. Thanks so much for watching this deck tech. We hope to see you guys next time on our next deck tech. And make sure, again, to like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter. And thank you for all your support. See you next time.